Did you ever give it thought that maybe Jesus' biggest miracle wasn't that he raised someone from the dead, but that rather he had 12 close friends when he was in his 30s? Next on The Metal Pulpit. Thanks for joining me for another Metal Pulpit. And yeah, that's the question I want to ask is, what was the biggest miracle? I want to focus in specifically on friends. I want to sp focus specifically on those of you that are in ministry. Now, when I say in ministry, I realize our minds can go all different ways and I respect everyone's views. I'm going to talk to you from the brick and mortar sort of place uh, in, in a church where you're on staff or uh, part time or lay ministry, whatever it is. But have you noticed that when you are in a ministry that you find it easy to be around people it's easy to have friends but it's difficult to have friends let me explain in when i was going through bible school back in 96 or 90 1995 96 i remember that one of the speakers said one of the things you ought not to do is become really good friends like best friends with those in your own congregation i thought he was crazy you know i i thought he was nuts because I think what a, what a great place to get friends, what a great place to have friends and uh, all of that. But you know, as I get older, I realize that I do have a lot of friends in ministry. I have friends in the church, but I get what he's saying about really close friends in the church or in ministry, because honestly, people come and go. Um, they could love the church one day, hate the church the next day. They could love you one day, hate you the next day they could um you you could be doing so good one day and then you say something that you shouldn't have or you you show a little uh, chink in your armor and people end up bailing it's tough it's really tough you see as pastors as staff as uh, lay ministers in the church um, we we everybody needs to have a friend but sometimes it's difficult when we do that in the church and so I would encourage you, I want to encourage you because I recently went through something like this where, um, you know, walked a path with someone for a long time, a long time, and had a lot of fun, shenanigans, all of that, and then they were gone. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things when people leave the church, they always say this, don't take it personal. <laughs> I appreciate their heart. You know, I really do. But we're, we're pastors, we're leaders. If you have somebody that's in, you're heading up a youth ministry and a kid comes up and says, don't take it personal, but I'm leaving your youth group. Guess what? You end up taking it personal. In fact, it's a gut shot. It's a, it's an unexpected blow. Um, it deflates what ego you may have. It hurts what friendship you thought you had. And all of these things, they're, they're, and they're legitimate. So here's what I suggest. Make friends in the church. It's, it's, it's important. That's the risk. Any friendship ought to have and does come with a risk. Okay. It almost seems like we should have a sign around our neck saying, thanks for being my friend. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know why? Because I'm going to hurt you at some point. You are going to hurt me at some point. And when we do that, that's when a friendship solidifies. And if we can get through that, that's when a friendship gets stronger. But we're in a culture, a throwaway culture. Don't like your TV? Throw it away. Uh, DVD player's not working? Throw it away. You can get another one for 20 bucks. And sadly, that's the case with friends too. Not getting along? Write them off. Go find another friend. Or get behind a keyboard and act like you're making friends in social media. But I would suggest make friends. Go ahead. Make friends in the church. That's a good thing. It's a healthy thing. But understand there runs a risk with that. Okay? Because you may have every intention of staying there for the long haul, but... Our church culture isn't like that anymore. In the 60s, 70s, 80s, it was like that. But our church culture isn't like that these days. And so, uh, but I, what I would also suggest is get involved in your community. Um, one of the reasons why I coach soccer, softball, get involved with my son's flag football. Um, last year I did this thing in the United States called Destination Imagination. I do that because then I can get to know people and make friends outside of the church. That comes with its own difficulties especially for those of you that label yourself 
pastor. You can be the coolest guy in the world. <laughs> you can be the coolest looking pastor in the world. And you know what? You throw that word out there of what you are, there will be a wall. I'm just saying. Jesus said we would have those moments. So make friends in ministry, but understand that, you know what? Things may run amok at some point. Make friends in ministry and enjoy it, but understand times change. So I hope that's an encouragement to you. Make friends in the church, but also get outside of the church. Get in the community, make friends elsewhere because somewhere along the way, things may run a little cattywampus and you will have more friends to lean on. Like I said, maybe Jesus' biggest miracle was that he had 12 close friends when he was in his 30s. Shoot me your questions, PastorBobAdams at gmail.com. I'll respond to you as quick as I can or right here on the next Metal Pulpit. Have a good day.